quite humbly and an honor to, to, to be here today. So as you said, um, sustainability. The reason why I'm on this stage today is because I, at one point, was uh, a part of the problem. Um, for about six years, without knowing, I was inadvertently contributing to making the fashion industry one of the, the most polluting worldwide. And the moment I realized that has um, a specific date. April 24th, uh, 2013. On that day, for, for me, is, it was just business as usual. And, and being a senior manager for, for a multi-billion dollar retail company here in Germany, actually, uh, business as usual really meant just pushing out as many units of clothing as possible out of our stores, get them out, get people to wear our stuff. That same day, though, um, for garment workers in Bangladesh, it was not business as usual. That was the day their, their work environment, their workspace came down, killing over 1,138 people, injuring more than 2,500, um, simply because at one point we, without realizing, just stopped holding the fashion industry accountable to how our clothes are being made and, and how they're made and by whom. So Rana Plaza, this is what I'm talking about, became for me kind of like the start point of, of, a, of, of a journey that led to the realization that fashion products, both by the way they come and how they go, meaning how we make them and how we then consume them, are today weighing in heavily, dramatically in the, the current environmental crisis. The positive thing about this, though, is that we, uh, Rod people, like we started believing that this crisis can actually be our biggest opportunity for progress. So, so briefly, as it was mentioned in the presentation, realizing all of this, realizing the true cost of what I was doing became for me motivation to take action and take it a step forward. Um, quite in a shocking state, but from 2013, 2015, I gradually discovered more about how, you know, the environmental and social cost of clothing. And I remember the day I went to my boss and said, hi, I am going to quit. I'm going to leave my career. I just want to give myself the chance to have a bigger impact. Um, he looked at me like this, and I was like, yeah, I'm as shocked as you, dude. Um, what now? I was out of my comfort zone. I had nothing but the dwelling, the desire to just work with more purpose. Not by myself. Uh, that's when I gathered a small group, co-founders, Victor and Sylvia. Together, we launched Rod, which at the beginning was nothing more than a simple Instagram page where we were just sharing content to, to really address the truth behind what we wear with a specific purpose in mind. We wanted to inspire people to manifest intangible social and environmental values through tangible things. In order, though, to, to really catalyze the rise of, of a new order of sustainable action in the fashion industry, we took Instagram and kind of became a mirror of, of our you know, aspirational lifestyle in a way. What Rod is today is quite different. Today, we became a, a, a startup, an innovative startup, with its own sustainable and R&D technological program and, and its own brand. But if you asked any of us, me, Victor, Sylvia, 2,000 years ago, if we thought that this was actually possible, um, two years ago? The answer is absolutely no. Simply because back then we had nothing more than the willing to, to address this topic and talk about the truth behind what we wear. And even more so today, how valuable is the truth? If we live in a world where, where reality is manufactured daily, like we see it every day at this point, um, the communication and education are under attack. Um, we have to learn to question everything we eat, we drink, uh, we hear, we listen to. Um, now we have to question what we wear. We don't really know anything that's going on around us. And, and the truth in this type of environment is never advertised at all. And it has become the kind of knowledge that can truly inflame people's hearts. That's what we thought. That's what we betted everything in. And that's what we started doing. And the confirmation came once we started seeing that actually speaking about these things had the power to bring together, unite other like-minded like people that were all united in their diversity by the same purpose, change. How can we become ourselves part of the solution? Um, this became really the first step for us to transition from a single, like a simple Instagram page to something more. Because at this point, we started putting together a team human capital, which is the biggest asset. We started connecting with people all over Europe that 
reached out somehow and started, you know, expressing the desire to be part of this conversation with us and just amplifying Rod's message. Um, Building this team became fundamental for us because that was the way we were able at one point to truly bring our message to a wider audience and, and create incentives to do bigger things. And I want to, you know, just to give you an example of how we, we used this sort of uh, social media for social good strategy. I want to talk to you about a, a person who's actually here in the audience, Theo. Um, Theo is a German from here. A couple years ago, he was probably scrolling on Instagram like we all do each morning. He, I don't know, he probably stumbled across our Instagram page. And that's when I received a direct message saying, hey dude, um, I really like your images, I like what you're doing, I love the message, how can I help you guys? I was a little throwback because it was like, oh, okay, we have somebody that I don't know uh, who wants to be part of this conversation. Uh, I simply asked him to give me uh, an example, send me a video, a picture, tell me why you want to be Rod. And, and he came back to me, I think a couple months later, right, Theo, with, with a short clip. It was about six minutes where he first he shows me why he, was, he thought he was Rod in his daily life. And then he expressed his purpose. He wanted to leave a legacy. He wanted to lead by example for his little brother. That touched us. And I was inspired to work with him. I wanted to do more with him. And we started activating several initiatives around Europe to the point where today, with Theo and his awesome crazy girlfriend, um, Vivi, who's also here, we started using Instagram and advanced it to the next level. We started using Instagram stories as a TV channel. A uh, TV channel addressing each week topics that are of interest in terms of like unveiling the truth behind what we wear. But blending it in with Teo and Vivi's raw daily routinary life. We call the show Address, and just to give you an example, an idea of how it works, it's actually being broadcasted live right now. So we're, you're all part of Address at this point. Um, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Today's show is going to deal with human rights and child labor. Today's topic is going to be fossil fuel. And today we will talk about waste. Chemicals. Today is all about weed. Hemp. Wake and bake, yo. It's all about <laughs> hemp. Fossil fuels are the biggest contributors to climate change and 90% of the fabrics in the clothes we wear today come from oil. And sadly our beautiful ocean is the number one victim of climate change. So here is just a brief example how you can use Instagram, blended, use the tools we have to advance a conversation and just invest in a message communication. And it's pretty crazy to see how a message like this or with purpose uh, has become contagious, number one, and truly allowed me personally, Rod, to grow from being, as I said, an Instagram page, to being a movement in Europe, to then being, you know, creative creating the incentives for, for companies to partner with us, to come our way, create that sort of synergic network that we needed to actually find solutions to some of the problems we are addressing with people like Vivi and Teo, therefore advancing new technologies, which we will be presenting tomorrow as well here at Fashion Sustain. And at the end, a brand, a brand that now puts out products that are nothing but a medium just to amplify this conversation and, and help us work together as one to truly get to a new order of sustainable action. So the story today, yes, it's about fashion, but the values we talk about really transcends to all other spheres of life. Um, it's, it's a crazy time we're living. Yes, there's an environmental crisis on one side, but there's also a spiritual crisis and a social crisis, and these are times where we're shifting in many different directions. How fast we will reach a new order that will put people and the environment at the center of our operation, I think is contingent on our willingness to give our voices the chance to speak with purpose and amplify our aspired identity. When was the last time we had the revolution? This is, was you know, something we ask ourselves pretty often. And I want to end it with uh, some of the words 
from other ROD ambassadors that connected with us throughout these years. I'm ROD because... I'm growing in a world that's beauty is being spoiled. Where nature is seen as a commodity to exploit. Our oceans are all messed up. Our rivers, our lakes, forests being cut down. Animals being killed for nothing. I guess many of us don't even see But damn, it's crazy. It's crazy what we're doing to our Earth. And what are we doing to each other? What are we doing to each other? At one point I left home. I felt like I needed to better understand the planet and its people, and it has been a real good awakening for me. I feel like we may have lost sight of what truly matters. Mistreatment. Discrimination. Social injustice. Total lack of respect for who we are as humans and our real value in this life. My sexual orientation. My skin color. My character. My religion. My body. My gender identity. My nationality. My education. My story. It's my value. I'm so sick of all this hate talk and what are they doing? Dividing us, giving power to the wrong people, people that are ruining everything that we've been for. What? Money? Power. Yeah. We just have to choose to take a position and, and give ourselves a chance to have an impact. I care to have an impact. I really do. If we don't care, then who cares? And if we don't stand up, then who stands? If we don't speak, then who speaks? And if we don't act, then who acts? If we don't love, then who loves? If we don't change, then who changes? It has to start from within ourselves. And the message will be amplified by us. We're united in our diversity. Under the same purpose, this desire to work to make things better for us. It's all about love. And man, it's an empowering feeling. The realization that change can happen. And we need it. When was the last time we had a revolution? We are awake. It's our time. Our fault to action. Thank you.